Okay, so you clicked on this video because obviously you want to mask things out, right? That's that's a given. Problem is, in a video I made a few weeks back, I talked about how to mask things out in Premiere Pro. However, it's not the best, nor is it the easiest or the most efficient of your time. That being said, I'm going to show you a method, which you might or might have not known, on how to mask things out and then how to actually use the tools to mask something out in After Effects without making a video in After Effects, exporting it, and then bringing it into Premiere Pro. You, you just do it. It's a seamless transition. We're going to talk about it. Let's hop into the computer. So here on the screen, you can see that I have the timeline, the project, for the questions and answers video. And if you haven't seen that, it's a video where I answer a lot of your questions, obviously, but I have this text like you see here behind me. It's a very, very clean mask. And you can tell, especially around the hair, that the mask looks good. I didn't have to do that manually by hand. I did that using a tool in After Effects. And the way I did that, let's say I wanted to go ahead and add it to a different clip. Let's just choose a different part of the footage. And let's say from this point here on the screen to the end of the clip right here, I just want this segment. I'm gonna go ahead and right click it. Now what I'm doing here by selecting this shot is saying, hey, this is the shot that I want to bring into After Effects, only this segment to edit upon, and do, do whatever I'm gonna do. In this case, we're gonna rotoscope or mask. So right click that shot, go to replace with After Effects composition. And if you don't already have it installed, it will tell you that you have to install After Effects. It'll probably open the Creative Cloud dialog box, do that, come back after it's installed. And it will have this window that says save as. It wants you to make it After Effects project, name it and save it. Simple, just do that. You can see right here, I have Roto Brush Q&A because that was the project I used from the last video when I, when I actually made the Q&A. Um, but in this case, we're gonna call it, you know, Roto Brush Tutorial. All right, save. Now it saved the project, it opened the project. Now you can see up here, we have a composition, but it says questions and answers linked. Now if we go back to Premiere Pro, you can see the title of our project is questions and answered, meaning that we have linked this After Effects project to this Premiere Pro project. That is an important part of this process to make it very easy and very quick for you to do. So just keep that in mind as we go. Now back in After Effects, you'll see a few things. Over here on the left side, you'll have a panel called Project. Under that, you'll have a video and you'll have a composition. So obviously the video is the actual source and then the composition is just the place where you're gonna actually add the effects and do things to it. You don't need to click any of these right now, but just so you're aware, that's why they're there. Go over here to Effect Controls and have that open. It's gonna be convenient in a minute. Now down here, you can see near our timeline, we'll have a source name, we'll have a file. If you click that, it will select the actual thing you just brought in, whatever that segment was. In this case, this is obviously the shot. I'm gonna go ahead and press Command C, then Command V and copy and make a duplicate of that. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then on the top layer, number one, we wanna go ahead and double click on the screen anywhere, it doesn't really matter. It'll open a layer, it'll open this layer in its own window, and this is where you're going to apply the actual mask or the rotoscope again to the shot on top. And there's a reason we do this, I'll go into it in a minute, but this is what I want you to do. So up here on the left, we have a little brush tool icon here called a roto brush. Click that, and all I want you to do is, as you can see by the way, you'll have a green dot on your screen, it'll be your mouse. Just click and trace over the general shape of your object that you want to mask out. I wanna keep me in the frame here, so I'm going to go ahead and trace over myself, and you'll see that it has this outline, and it might or might have not did it well or whatever. And that's okay, we're gonna obviously work this until it looks good. So I'm missing my hand here, so I'm just gonna draw a little line there, and obviously now it has added my hand into the mask. I'm missing this part of my shoulder, so grab that, do that again, and okay, you know, we're getting there, right? On my heart of my ear here. I want my whole hat, so let's just go ahead and outline the hat. And okay, you could you could basically say, hey, you know, it's generally decently selected, but obviously there's some problems. Over here, I don't want this part of the ground, I don't want this part of the ground, and I don't want this janky, terrible looking line around my head, what can I do? Well, you can hold Alt, right? And if you hold Alt, you see it goes red. Hold Alt and just select the areas you don't want, like that, and it will delete those areas add back in the areas you do want. And if you want to, you can always zoom in and then you can press the space bar and you can click and drag around. I don't like how close that is to my face. Um, and for the most part, it's done a decent job at selecting me as a subject. However, it's a little bit rough around the edges and my hair is not included. And obviously we want that. So we can go ahead to the brush again, the brush tool up here, the roto brush tool, click and hold it and go to the refine edge tool, which is kind of what it sounds like. It refines the edge selection that you've made. And all you wanna do again, you'll see that it's a purple dot on your screen this time. Zoom into where you want. For instance, I want this part of my hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, roughly select that part of my hair. And you'll see that now it has made a selection in black and white. The black section here is what won't be selected and the white is what will 
remain in the mask. So obviously I'm missing some important parts here still. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw some more lines here to make sure whatever is in this mask will actually be selected. In this case, here I am, right? You can see what's white, you can see what's black. Obviously, again, what's black will not be selected. And just go ahead and do that for, you know, whatever you need. So in this case, the hair over here, I'm gonna draw over that, draw over this again, draw over that. And you can see now that this, you know, refined edge tool has selected my hair here, and then it has not selected the areas that we don't want, which would be where my hair is not. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out here. I'm gonna go to the top of my hat and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna refine this edge. Obviously, it will tell me what it's gonna keep, what it's not gonna keep based on the colors again. And I'd say that this is a pretty good selection. Now I know that the actual rotor brush has selected my body, right? What I want out of it. And then it has not selected the hair, so I used the refine edge tool, selected the hair. We're all good, you know, it looks pretty good. Now, we have these tools over here on the left that, you know, you can play around with. The feather, for instance, I'm gonna bring to like 15, just to make the brush a little softer. And then I'm going to go under the refine edge mat tool, and I'm gonna make the feather around 10, and I'm going to smooth it to about five. These values might not be applicable for you. Just play around and, you know, change the values as you need to figure out what works for you, and then come back and follow the rest of this. So now I want you to track the mat forward by letting it play through, right? So play through it once so it will bring and follow the actual rotoscope through the sequence. Or if you have like a keyboard with like a number pad here, uh, just press the, the period or the dot and it will go through the frames and each frame it will take that rotor brush the amount of information that we've given it and apply it to the rest of them in a smart AI based way if, if you would. Now it's important to mention that you want to have Roto Brush version 3.0 selected, not one or two or whatever. Press the period button on your keyboard and you'll see that it's tracking forward through this sequence and it's going to roto out the part that I want. So we sit here and we wait and it does take a little bit of time. All right, so for the sake of the video, now that you've gone ahead and made sure that it's selected in each frame and that the roto brush looks okay, and again, if it didn't look okay, find the frame that it looks bad at and fix that with the same tools we just went over and it will only apply to that frame forward. So now that you've you know gone ahead and done that, let's go ahead and press the freeze button here on our screen. We want to freeze the actual information that we just gave After Effects so it doesn't have to keep calculating where the roto brush tool should apply itself and slow down your computer and make the sequence run slower, all that. So go ahead and press freeze. And now this will take a bit of time. Go get yourself a cup of coffee, go, go do something, come back. Let's talk about it after that. Okay, so now the freeze has been saved. As long as that is blue, it's gonna mean that it's saved that information. Don't click that again unless you need to make a change to your rotoscope and then you'll have to refreeze it again. But let's assume, now I'm just assuming, that your rotoscope looks good. In that case, go back to your composition. Now obviously nothing looks different here, but if you go ahead down here and you press the eyeball to turn off this bottom layer, you'll see that the actual rotoscope has been applied to that top layer and that's the only data left in that top layer. It's not deleted, it's just rotoscoped out. Again, if you wanted to undo that, you could just go to the layer here and you can delete these effects from that, from that should you want to. However, I don't, so again, composition, and here I am. Let's turn that layer back on so the shot looks normal again. But now we can go ahead and add things. Let's say that I want to, I don't know, add text like I did the last video. Let's go ahead to the text layer up here, right? Command T, click, click the screen somewhere, anywhere, right? And say, uh, subscribe. Now we have our text. Let's go ahead and either press command on our keyboard here and center it that way. It'll snap to the center or, or bring it wherever you want. In my case, I want it to snap to the center. So I'm looking good. The text is the color and font that I like here. Again, if you don't know that font is, watch the last video I talk about it or you can just look at the text panel on my screen. That being said, I have the text where I want it, but it's still not behind me. What's going on? Well, as you can see down here in the left, you have that our text layer is actually above that rotoscoped layer. So I wanna take the rotoscope layer and I just wanna click and drag it on top of the text. And now the text you can see has appeared behind me. Now what do we do? Well, just press Command S or go up here to the file, save, and it will automatically save this information and send it back to Premiere Pro and just plug it right into the sequence of whatever you were editing. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize After Effects. And you'll see now that this is yellow, just like these two are. And that's because it's an After Effects composition. It's labeled differently. If I right click here and go to label, you'll see that it's a dynamic link label color. That's just the color Premiere Pro chose for it, but that's what we're doing here. We're working with dynamic link to send information from one place to another. That being said, thanks guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Good night. I think that went well. That was first try.